guys, we're back into our study in the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the church at Rome. And we have been looking at some things that he had been looked up, uh, writing in there. By the way, we've got a little handout, horizontal versus uh, vertical, good read, and simply food for thought. Amen? And, we, and, and as we continue in our study, we're in chapter 12, and we'll begin our reading our, uh, by way of review at verse 14. And if you're using a pew Bible, you'll find that on page 985. 985. Yep. 985. That's right. Keep them straight, Sister Ellen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And we know Paul has been ministering or writing this letter to that church, but ministering to us as well in regard to how we ought to conduct ourselves being believers, being Christians in, 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 a, in a world, in Paul's world, as well as during ours. And listen, we're in a time when everybody wants to do their own thing. They want to go the way they want to go. But, but God has left us a book, 66 uh, of chapters of a book, in regard to the truth. And, and we're to guide our lives, not by the world, but by the word of God. Amen? amen. If you're there, if you're chapter 12, verse 14, please say amen. Amen. And he writes here, as we, as we continue, he says, Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. And, and what we know is that usually the world is opposite of that. And in fact, we have our moments sometimes when we're riding down the road and somebody cuts us off. And, and, and listen, we don't always say, oh, praise the Lord, God bless them. We, 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 we want to bless them, but not so much with that in a moment. And listen, what Paul is saying is that, that that's really how the world is. But God says that our ways are not the world's ways. And we are now to conduct our lives, walk our walk, according to the word of God. Again, he says, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. And weep with them that weep. And listen, what he's saying is that we're bearing one another's burdens. We're coming alongside Guys, when we see somebody hurting, and many times, even though someone might say, oh, I'm okay, everything's okay, and you can see the pain, you can see the hurt in their eyes, in their heart, in their posture, listen, come alongside, don't just push them to the side, and if you know someone is hurting, and if at the very least, pray with them, and, and on the other side of the coin, if somebody's doing well, and, and for whatever reason, they, they share that with you, don't, don't be jealous, don't say, oh, man, that should have been me. No, 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 rejoice with them. Be happy for them because their joy is your joy as well. Amen? Amen. He, he goes on in, in, in verse 16. He said, be of the same mind, one toward another. And look, we know that that's the mind of Christ. He says, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. And guys, listen, even though we might be doing okay Right now, today, we all have some times, we all have some moments when we're not doing okay. And listen, what he's saying is that, look, there's some guys that, that I minister to, the Lord send them my way, and, 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 and I look at them sometimes, and, and, and somebody might look at them and say, well, I'm not fooling with them. They don't, they're, they're not right, or they're not of my stature. Look, who am I, first of all, to say who's where or, or, or not? And secondly, but for the grace of God go I. And if God sends them to me or sends me to them, then it's for the purpose of me ministering to them. And look, just like Jesus, even though he was king, humbled himself and, and listen, he even washed the feet of his disciples. Look, I can get down and, and humble myself as well and be a blessing to someone who perhaps the world says is not on my level. I'm not full of with him. Uh -uh. Jesus got down in service and ministered to me. So I can't do no less. Amen? Amen. He says in verse 17, and by the way, last time we read this together, so I think we're going to do this together as well. So everybody see verse 17? Yes. And it says with me, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. And, and, and again, he's talking about that getting even type ministry that sometimes the world wants to do. You did unto me, I'm going to do unto you. And listen, what he's going to help us to know as we go into, into the next couple of verses is that, look, vengeance belongs to the Lord. It's not mine. And, and look, just it, I, I, the other day I stopped short because I had to, I was on a highway, and all the traffic stopped. 
And a guy came up behind me, almost hit me, but number one, if he wasn't riding so close, it wouldn't have been that issue. And, and secondly, after we stopped and, and nobody hit anybody, he pulled around me and, and, and looked at me and then cut in front of me and stopped short. Now, what he called himself doing was getting back at me, but in reality, he was just simply showing himself who he really was. And, and what God is saying through Paul is that that's not mine to do. That's God's to take care of. I can't worry about that. And, and, and listen, I know sometimes it's not that easy. But guys, we have the mind of Christ. We have the Lord's Spirit living inside of us. And, and if we ask Him, we grab a hold of that Spirit and, and we leave it into the sea of forgetfulness and let God deal with whatever needs to be done. He says in verse 17, Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And, and, and listen, in, in reality, he's saying as a believer, as a Christian, it's time to grow up. That's how we did when we were petty, when we were worldly. But we are alive now in Christ, and it's time to come up out of that pettiness. Amen? Amen. In verse 18, he says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And, and listen, I get it, it's not always that easy. Guys, I already know I'm not that easy to live with all the time. And, and listen, by the way, you're not that easy to live with all the time either. And he's saying that it, 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 with everything you got, you ought to make an effort through the power of the living God to get along with folk. Amen? Amen. Me and my wife were talking yesterday. We are talking about uh, uh, people, and, and sometimes they, they, they want to fight and, and fuss with each other. He's talking about people in the church. But, but I think about, and I said, the Lord's trying to get us to realize that we are a family in Him. Amen. And listen, we're born of God. And listen, so we ought to start looking like Him, acting like Him. And by the way, we're going to be in heaven for forever. So we need to go ahead and get an early start right now. Yeah. And realize yeah. that you're my brother. Yeah. And you're my sister. Yeah, right. And we are one in Christ. And I get it, sometimes personalities just clash but, but that's okay. Say hi, uh, uh, greet somebody, and, and maybe you can't hang out with them one on one. But but they're still your brother and sister in Christ. We gotta find a way to get along. Amen. 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 He goes on in verse nineteen. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. And, and he goes on, and, and I love this part. It says, "For it is written." There you go, Sister Alba. <laughs> Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. But, but what happens is many times we get stuck in the part where it says vengeance is mine. We don't go on to the part that says that the, the Lord's going to repay. We simply say vengeance is mine. I'm going to get them. And, and listen, I, I know folks who have been harboring ill will towards someone for years. For years. And for years. And listen, when you do that, you begin, you begin to look like that mess that you're holding in your heart. And listen, I've done that. I've done it in my past. But the Lord's blessed me to be able to release that. And sometimes when Satan brings it back up, I, I give it to him again. And I give it to him again. Because what I know is that God's called me to do a work here in this life. And I need to do the work he's called me to do. And, and, and I can't do that work. Look, I'm big enough. Me walking is, is enough carrying the weight I got. But when I'm carrying that weight, hallelujah, of unforgiveness, which by the way is sin, when I'm carrying that, you get awful tired being bogged down over something that probably had nothing to do with nothing. And I should have turned it loose a long time ago. I know folk who have been mad at people and the, and the person is going to die. And, and then they don't know what to do with that mad. Because they didn't release them while they were living. And with God is saying, I'm going to repay. I'm going to take it. Nobody's getting away with nothing. And I get it. I hear somebody out there thinking right now, I just want to see him get them. You want to be that proverbial fly on the wall. <laughs> Guys, understand God's going to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of with, with them. And by the way, he's going to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of with, with me as well. Amen. Amen. He says in verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. 
In verse 20, it says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And, and listen, what I need to understand is that if somebody is against me, in, in particular, just for righteousness, say just for being a Christian, if somebody's mad at me for that, I need to understand that that person, whoever it is that, that's trying to get back at me, that's trying to mess me up, that there's a source, a root, that's empowering them and sending them my way in, in regard to that. And I know it's not God. And if it's not God, then it's Satan. So I need to give the whole kit and caboodle to God anyhow. And, and listen, not only pray, Lord, that I don't get upset, but pray that he'll release them as well. Yeah. Pray. And give them to the Lord. And, and he says here that, that in doing so, you shall reap coals of fire on his head. And, and in essence, what he's saying is that every time somebody comes at me and, and they don't like me for whatever reason, and they're coming at me mean and I'm giving them love, and they're coming at me mean and I keep giving them love, ultimately my prayer is that I love the hell out of them. And, and that, that not that I do it, but that God does it. And ultimately, what will actually happen, maybe their conscience will be pricked. And every time they're coming at me, I'm giving them God's love. And maybe God will use that to open their eyes and to wake them up to the realities of Jesus Christ. And soften their heart. And bless them to know the one that I know as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. He says in verse 21, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And listen, what he's saying in essence, guys, if I go tit for tat, if I go toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, if, I, if, if I want to repay what they've done and, and we going back and forth, what I have done is allow evil to overcome me as opposed to overcoming evil with good. And I've got myself right into the same slime pit with, with somebody who's trying to come down on me. And, and listen, if you've done something wrong and, and, and in reality or, 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 or wrong someone, God will take care of you as well. But, but I don't need to get in the pit and go toe to toe with them because what we have done is gotten off the focus of what God has called us to do. And, and listen, whatever ministry work I was involved in, and, and even if it's a believer, I'm going toe to toe with them. Whatever ministry work they're involved in, all of that stops. And no progression is made. And we have allowed evil, and by the way, evil is none other than Satan himself, to overcome us. You ever have a thought in your mind about something in the past and you think about it and you say, oh, I don't need to think about that, but you keep messing around with it in your mind? Amen. If you do that, you can literally make yourself mad at somebody you ain't seen in 20 years over something that, that really had nothing to do with nothing. And before you know it, you're knee deep in I wonder where they are. I'm going to find them on Facebook. Or I'm going to get, no, leave it alone. Give it to the Lord. Get back on track and allow him to do with you what needs to be done. Amen? Amen. Guys, I would ask that you would be prayerful with me as I preach around the subject. God's love covers a multitude of faults. And Father, as we dive deeper into this book of Romans, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will touch and bless each and every heart, each and every soul that's here this day. And Father God, we come, uh, many of us, covered with many loads of care. And Father God, we pray that for, for this next half hour, for this next hour, that, that Lord, you dismiss that from us and, and allow us to, to concentrate wholly and solely on the inerrant word of God. And Father, I pray that you use me this morning as your teacher, as your preacher, to unveil some things that you have given me to study for this week. And Lord, as they leave my mouth, Lord, allow me to be first partaker, and then touch the hearts and minds of each and every one within the sound of my voice, as we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. 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 And amen. Chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. I know you're there, but I'm going to ask anyway, if you're, if you're there, please say amen. amen. I just like to hear amen, that's all. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Elvin. She's going she to help me OD on amen. Uh, verse, verse 1 of chapter 13. And, and Paul writes here, he says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, 
And he said, the powers that be are ordained of God. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, I love this verse and, and how, how he's had Paul to, to word it. And, and he's saying that we're to be subject to the higher power. But he goes on and stop there. He says, well, there is no power but of God. And what he's helping us to understand, guys, that, that even the, the, the human government has been instituted by God. And believe it or not, as rough as some of them are, the Lord allowed or put some of them in office for his reasons, for his purposes. And he's saying that ultimately there's no power higher than God. If, if, if he doesn't want them there, he had no problem dismissing them from that position. He, he, and he also goes on, he says, but he says, but of God, he says, the power to be ordained of God, that, that somehow God has said that this is who I want in place. And he said that I am to be subject to man's laws. By the way, there's one time when I don't have to be subject to them, and that's when they contradict God's law. But, but as long as they don't contradict God's law, look, it, it, and I always use this analogy, not because I, I drive fast all the time, but it, it just is one that's, it, that's convenient for me. If you're going, if you're going down the road and, and, and the speed limit, and guys, we all do it, it can say 70. You're going to go 75, you know it. If it says 40, you're going to go 45. And, and listen, the law allows you so many and, and it won't pull you over. But guess what? Even if he pulled you over, if you were going one mile faster, one mile an hour faster and pulled you over and gave you a ticket, uh -huh. you're going to be upset. You can fuss and, and, and do whatever you want, but in reality, he's doing what he's supposed to do. You're guilty. Amen? Amen. And, and listen, you're not saying amen when he's giving you that ticket. What you will say is, well, that guy was going faster than me, or, or look at him over there. He's speeding past us. And, and, and I actually said that one time, and the officers, officers said, yeah, but I didn't catch them. <laughs> I caught you. And so we're going to deal with you. He says in verse 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher power, for there is no power but of God. The powers of be, he says, are uh, that be are ordained of God. And he goes on in verse 2, he says, whosoever therefore, look, resisteth the power, and he's talking about earthly authority here, guys. It says, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist, look what he says here, shall receive to themselves damnation. And, and, and listen, I read this, and thank God, as a believer, I don't have to worry about being damned. But what I do know is that there's consequences for the things I do. And, and if I'm breaking man's law, God says, I'm sinning, so I got him to deal with that, that, that he's going to chase me. He says, those he loves, he chastens. And, and listen, on the back side of it, I'm going to have to pay the penalty because I've broken the law. And, and look, I can sit back, and I can say that law is unjust. I can say that law is not right. I can say I don't like that law. I can do whatever I want. But once judgment is, is, is settled on me, and I can ask the Lord for mercy, and, and maybe he'll provide that. But, but if I get it in driving, if I get a ticket, I've got to pay that ticket or, or whatever it is that I do. And, and, and I can say, Your Honor, everybody does it. When they go down that street, everybody speeds. And, and the judge said, well, I'll deal with everybody when they get here. But right now, we got you. Amen. <laughs> and verse 3 says, For rulers are not a terror to good works. And, and listen, in essence, he's saying if you do right, if for the most part, you're not going to have nothing to worry about. It says, But to the evil. He says, Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. And in essence, what he's saying is that if I live a God fearing life, that for the most part, I don't really have anything to fear from those who are in power. And even if they come down on me, guess what? We already read in verse 1 that there's no power but of God, that he's in control over all of all things. So even if I'm unjustly taken care of, that God can justly take care of me and swerve things that go my way. And, and what he's saying, because of that, I need to do what I'm supposed to do. In verse 4, he says, for well, he is the minister of God. And he's talking about those that are authority, those that are in position that, that in the government. He says, for well, he is the minister of God to thee, look, for good. But if thou do that which is evil, he says, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. And, and listen, when he's talking about the sword here, he, he's talking about the man's law and whatever the consequences for breaking that law is. That's his sword. He says, for well, he is the minister of God a revenger to execute wrath 
upon him that doeth evil. Amen. And listen, we, we see it in the news in, in regard to like cops doing different various things, but I got to tell you, that's probably not the norm. The, the, the average cop, at least the ones I know, they're, they're okay, the ones I speak to. And listen, but there are some in every walk of society of guys that just aren't right, and they're not going to do right. But guess what? Guess who watches over them? Guess who's going to come down on them in, in, in God's time? He'll take care of them. What we know is that the, the one that's writing this letter here, Paul, the apostle, was jailed many times and did nothing wrong. But God allowed him to be jailed for righteousness sake. And, and in fact, he, he was in prison many times and, and he said in one of his letters in, 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 um, in, in Ephesians 3 and 1, he says, For this cause I, Paul, and he calls himself the prisoner of the Lord for ye Gentiles. And, and what Paul was saying, he, intimating here, he said, look, I'm here. But God has me here for a purpose. There were some that were in prison, some that were in, a family, in, in, in Caesar's household that needed to hear about Christ. And Paul, and God sent Paul there. And he didn't cry about it. He didn't whimper about it. He simply went where the authorities had him to be. And, and not to mention, guys, and, and he's getting ready to go talk about the laws and different various things. I remember a time when they was asking Jesus Christ doing his earthly ministry if, and not, if indeed he was going to pay the, the, the tax. And so what he did, he said, listen, he was going to keep man's law as well. So he said, go down here and we'll get a fish. And in that fish, there's a coin. And in that coin, I'm going to pay the temple tax with this. He paid it because that was the law of the land. And not to mention it was put in place by he and his father anyhow. And he had no problem doing what the authorities told him to do. Amen. Amen. He says in verse 6, I'm sorry, look at verse 5. He says, wherefore ye must needs be subject, it says, not only for wrath. And he's saying that we don't keep the law just because, well, you know what, if I don't do this, I'm going to get a ticket. Or if I, if I don't do this, I'm going to go to jail. He's saying that, that you don't do it not only for wrath, he said, but also for conscience sake. And what he's saying is that God says we ought to do it, so we ought to do it. And that really settles it for the believer. We don't need to get unskirt ourselves so close to breaking the law. And, and man, what can I, it, we should be looking at it saying, what can I get away with? Last week I was speeding, and, and I, I wasn't, but I'm just sharing <laughs> A, a scenario. Last week I was speeding, and, and listen, the, the cop, I went by him, I was, I was going six miles over the speed limit. What can I get away with now? And, and maybe I go 10, maybe 11, maybe 12, and, and just keep on pushing it and pushing. No, if, if, if it says what it says, we ought to do what it says and, and simply be obedient to it. And man, a lot of smiles out here when it comes to the speeding thing. <laughs> I, maybe I need to call Melbourne police and tell them to put a radar gun out there. <laughs> he, he says in verse 5, Wherefore ye, ye, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For, for this cause, it says, pay ye tribute also. And he's talking about taxes here, and I just shared what Jesus did. It says, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. And he's saying that God has them in position. And, and i got to tell you, if I had a choice bet between, at, at one time they were talking uh, palm based taxes where we weren't paying for, for, for the uh, utilities and for the police and for the fire. For, for a minute there, they were going to fire all the police and firemen and they were going to use the fire department from Melbourne and use the state police to, to go around in, in Palm Bay. And i got to tell you, I would rather have our cops there rather than not have them there and, and to have our own fire department there. And, and listen, they all of a sudden they came up with some money and they were able to take care of that. But I would rather have folk in place in regard to laws, even though it still seems like lawlessness, I would still rather have them in place than not have it in place at all. It's bad enough with law. Yeah. Imagine the chaos it would be if there was none. And, and, and listen, little by little, we kind of get into that place anyhow. But listen, I'll take what we got for right now. 
And listen, whatever needs to be done with the lawmakers, whatever needs to be done with the corrupt folk, whatever needs to be done with those who are in position and they're violating that position, I'm not going to take care of them. But I know that there is one that sits high and looks low and he's got them. <laughs> Nothing's getting by him. And little by little, we begin to hear about this one was doing this and, and nobody knew for years. And this one was doing that. He's uncovering a whole bunch of stuff and he's going to uncover a whole bunch more because he's in charge of all things. Amen? Amen. He says in verse 7, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due. Fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And listen, he, he, and with his honor thing, he's talking about showing respect, guys. He, not talking about bowing down to anybody, but showing respect, not so much for the person, but for the position that God has them in. In verse 8, he says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And listen, here Paul's talking about the, the royal law of God, and, and he writes that little royal law down in James chapter 2, verse 8, if you're taking notes. And, and he writes there, he says, If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. James says, Ye do well. And, and by the way, look to your left or right. Look to your left or right. Say, Howdy, neighbor. And, and listen, whatever you want to do for yourself, you do for them as well. And, and, and with Paul, what God's saying through Paul is that you're fulfilling the royal law. And, and if we treat everybody that way, we'll be okay. Now, now unless you want someone like to, to beat yourself or something like that, then, then, then don't treat them like you treat yourself. But treat them like God says you ought to treat them. Amen? Amen. He says in, in verse um, 8 again, Owe no man anything. But to love one another, he says, but he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, verse 9, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it says it is briefly comprehended in this, saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And listen, I can go back down the list, and when we get to yours, you can raise your hand if you want. But, but what he's saying is that, if, that none, of, none of this, is, if you're not on any of this list here, he's simply saying that if we love our neighbors, love one another as we love ourselves, that somehow it's going to work out okay. Man, I'm, I'm looking at, at, at some of the guys here, and I'm looking at myself. I, I treat myself real good when it comes to food. I, I mean, I, I, I do. And, and I like it, and I eat it, and, and, and I eat it in abundance sometimes. Amen? Amen. So, so when you're hungry, if you come to me, I'm not going to give you a, a celery stick. I'm going to give you some food. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. And, and listen, in every aspect of our lives, if you're hurting, if you have a need, and you come to me, I'm going to help you with that need, as God allows me to help you with that need. Amen? Amen. Amen. He says in verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And guys, by the way, who loved us? God, God did. So much so that what? He sent who? He sent Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And listen, God didn't just say, I love you. He put meat on that love and sent his only begotten son to the cross to die for me and to be buried for me and to go through all that torment that he went through here on earth. And he raised him up. And then he gave him and put him at the right hand. In fact, his proper place at the right hand of God. And that wasn't enough. Then he looked down on folk just like us. In fact, he looked down on us and he says that all that my son went through, that he's going to be my child and she's going to be my child. And I'm grafting all of them in. And in fact, they're part of my family. I'm taking their blood and I'm giving them my son's blood. And now every time I look at them, I don't see no sin. That's love. And hallelujah, if he can do that for me. 
My God, every once in a while I can humble myself. Every once in a while I can be wrong. Every once in a while I can say I was wrong. Every once in a while I can be a blessing to someone regardless of what they have done to me. Because I have love in me that I didn't put in me. I have love from God the Father that was given to me because of the finished works of the Son. And now, hallelujah, because he loved the unlovely, and by the way, that's me, I can do that as well. I can love some folk that before I, that they would get on my last nerve, but, but now the Lord has me ministering to them. Now he has me calling them. Now he has me trying to win them for Christ. Now he has me going out of my way to be a blessing to them. And, and sometimes I sit back and say, man, you used to didn't like that dude. <laughs> And look, in, in, in reality, from the fleshly, maybe I still don't in regard to like. But man, my love God gave me overrides my like. And, and listen, they got a need, and I need to see if I can do something to help them to fulfill that need, thereby showing the love of Christ, not just here. Because we can do that. Man, we can, oh, I love you. Love you. Oh, love you. Man, to show it in actuality, to do something that hallelujah shows that I love. That's something different. And that's one, hallelujah, that we can grow on. That's one that will show somebody the love that we have been shown when we show the love of Christ in our actions as well as in our words. Amen. Amen. Guys, this is going to be an abbreviated sermon, and I'm going to cut it off right there because we have to go into our commun communion service. And at this time, I'm going to ask everyone if you would bow as we pray over our elements and ask the Lord to bless this communion service. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for our sermon that had already gone forward. Father, we pray. Lord, as the words hit the ears and the hearts of each and every one within this place, that you'll minister to them, Father God, and bless them in a mighty and a special way, Lord. Allow it to take root, Father God, in good soil. And Father, you do with these truths in our heart as you see fit. And Father, as we go forward into our communion service, I'm asking for a special blessing for the elements that we use. Lord, knowing that it's simply grape juice and unleavened crackers and Father God, we're praying that you will bless them so that we may use them, take them from a secular use to a spiritual use as we remember the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, on this day, help us to remember what he has done for us as we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. And amen. As you see in your bulletins, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just making a note of something here. Give me a second. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 11, that should be page 996 if you're using a pew Bible. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to zero in on verse 23. And here, this is also a letter, an epistle of Paul that he wrote to the church at Corinth. And his purpose for writing it is because they were partaking of the Lord's Supper, the Lord's table, but they were doing it in a faulty manner. And he was writing this letter to remind them of what they were doing and what was the correct way of partaking of these elements. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 beginning at verse 23. If you're there, please say amen. 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 And Paul writes here, he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25, it begins, he says, After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often, verse 26, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, verse 29, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Paul writes in verse 30, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And Paul says, and the rest will I set in order when I come. And guys, every first Sunday we read these same verses and what we know is that what Paul is saying is that this church was out of order in regard to how they were partaking of this table. And what he's saying to them and saying to us is that, look, this is the Lord's table and it's been set aside for the Lord's people. And he's saying that if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and you have received him in your heart, He's saying that this table is for you. But he's saying that if you have not received Christ, if there's an issue with that, then he said that this table is not for you. And he's also saying, guys, that if we're not right, if there's some sin that we can't get right when we pray here in this place, if there's an issue between me and someone else, if there's something that's inhibiting me from being right with the Lord, then this table, I need to put it on the back burner. When, when, the, when the trays come along, I don't need to take it, and I need to get right with the Lord first, and then I can partake the next time we have communion. Again, nobody's going to ever ask you why you're not taking it, but I guarantee you if you're taking it unworthily, God's going to let you know something. And in fact, Paul says here, he says, for, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, uh, and, and many sleep. And, and what we know of, of, of Christians, that they don't die eternally, they fall asleep. So he's saying to believers, guys, that there are folk who have been doing things and doing wrong and not being right and partaking of these elements. And, and i got to tell you, I don't fool with this. God's saying, if you're not right, don't take it. And he's saying, if you're not right and you do take it, God only knows what's going to be the outcome of it. With everything we do, guys, there are always consequences. And if we're right, then the consequences is going to be being right with God. But if we're not right, then the consequences are going to be, he's going to have to have a word with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's take a moment. Let's make sure we're right in our hearts. And then we will pass out the elements and partake. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please take a moment.